is Radovan van Sernet. I'm coming from uh, Guardiaris company. I'm in charge of advanced program development in the company. Uh, this is basically my role. All right. Can you already tell us what led Guardiaris to design its own training system? Well, uh, Gerdaris actually has a long heritage of uh, in-house development of uh, variety simulation uh, graphics engines, actually dating back more than uh, 10 years. And this is one of our uh, major uh, competencies that we have uh, acquired, you know, during this time. And we started actually in game development. So our core team is coming from the game development uh, uh, world, if you like. Uh, but, but eventually, due to market-specific needs uh, and the MOD requests, me, we moved into the defense realm, if you like, uh, and military. And uh, we actually leveraged the intricate knowledge of uh, simulation graphics engines, you know, and coupled them into the uh, defense uh, digital simulators and eventually also building digital twins. We started with the full-fledged uh, main battle tank simulator for the Slovenian army. Uh, it was really back then, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, it's actually, it was a simulator for the uh, modified T-72. It was called M84 uh, tank back then, which was followed very, uh, very early after that with the 8x8 uh, vehicle also uh, simulator of the APC. Uh, I, I still have a, a couple of chapters here. So uh, actually due to in-house uh, vertical development, so we are covering uh, the whole uh, cycle, you know, uh, development and production. Uh, but the most important is, is this, uh, our simulation graphics engine that is called GART. And of course, then uh, before you come to the digital twin in the simulation, you need to have mechanical development and electronics development. So we are able actually to uh, make up uh, and develop the, the complete uh, simulation system of any type of uh, weapon, uh, digital replicas, and offer the complete uh, training solution to uh, our customers, okay? Uh, of course, customers want to control and to manage the, the, the simulation environment, and this is also the other part that we are offering, so the complete management system with the same user interface, you know, across the board of, regardless of the types of weapon that, that you are using. So we are uh, somehow very focused on how to best fit to the customer needs, uh, their constraints and optimize the, you know, this uh, swap acronym, so size, weight, uh, power, and basically also cost to, to the uh, customer. The technology that lies behind your system, the technology you developed and that we cannot find on other systems. Okay, so what makes us uh, unique? So it's uh, our in-house developed uh, simulation graphics engine. So we are in this respect, uh, you know, independent of uh, other market vendors that are producing the, the uh, commercial uh, uh, simulation engines. That's why we can tailor them and very optimize, you know, to the final solutions of the of the military simulators. And very recently, we have implemented the lead-based uh, mobile solutions, lead-wall-based mobile solutions for for the uh, training systems. Okay, so th th this is really the essential core. Okay, and of course. Uh, Based around that, uh, we then uh, make the complete system so that it's uh, either mobile and always turnkey solution. So we are providing and catering to the to the customer as a turnkey solution provider. Okay, starting from there once again, how far could other weapons and scenarios than those currently available on your system be added to your training system to fit evolving needs of a customer? Actually, we are uh, building into the design itself the modularity and scalability. So this is somehow inherently in our solutions. So the key building blocks of uh, Guardiaris are well-defined modules. Let's say, uh, so you can, uh, with a simple addition of multiple weapon uh, replicas, it's really possible. And uh, uh, the end customer doesn't see any difference apart from, you know, selecting another weapon replica where uh, he wants to train. So, so this is one part of the modularity. The, the other uh, part of the modularity that is also coupled with the scalability is 
if you have the presentation or projection of where you are moving with the uh, with the trainees, let's say why this uh, four meters wide lead wall, and they are training with four trainees, they want to upgrade to scale up. Uh, how can we do it with the eight? Okay, no problem. We put another uh, uh, lead wall uh, beside that and treat it as a whole system as a as a unity okay so we can expand uh, here in uh, so double modules or triple modules so that you can scale in the number of trainees okay so but but in general scalability we defined either as uh, functional performance or in scope obviously functional scalability if a uh, vendor wants to have anti tank weapon rgw something okay with a certain set of uh, functionalities, and then they gradually improve either the functions or add something. We will also add these uh, uh, differences in software, let's say, or, or the mechanical um, uh, usage of the weapon digital twin into our simulator. And the uh, user doesn't need basically to know much about that okay so this is part of the of, of the function regarding the, the the performance uh in very simple terms uh, you know in the virtual environments where, where you do the simulation it's always uh either frame rate or uh, resolution so gradually when we are actually moving uh, beyond uh, full hd to 4k and let's say beyond 30 frames per second to 40 or to 60 frames per second but the most interesting uh, is actually for customers is the scope expansion and scope scalability, whereby they can, within the same system, add different types of training devices or weapon replicas. For example, they can start training with uh, rifles, then they want to do some tactical stuff together uh, in a team or a squad with anti-tank weapons. So they can add within the same again system uh anti-tank weapon uh, training devices then you need some forward observer guy you know with the binoculars uh so we have a, a replica of of these two uh however the whole management of the of the uh, training uh, solution always stays the same so the learning curve is really uh uh, you, you know, minimized or is not steep, and you always preserve the uh, the knowledge that was already invested by the customer within the within this uh, training environment. Okay, so this is the idea. So modularity and scalability is uh, always on our minds. How do you first uh, target some customers specifically? I mean, envisaging a larger panel of potential customers. Who do you target with your training system? The domain of uh, of defense is uh, quite specific, so it's always you know the end customer is known. It's always Ministry of Defense in in some sort or or, or, or the other. But uh, we are somehow you know were born out of the requirements of the MODs and starting years back, as I explained already, it was a Slovenian MOD. They are actually very very supporting of. Uh, of uh, such developments uh, and we have very good cooperation with them so they put out the requirements uh, and basically also the constraints so this uh, main battle tank simulation was was a typical one and then we moved uh, forward so we are listening to listening to them it's always uh, the best to have the support in your own backyard of course where they then provide also the environment for testing and qualification so and after that of course we then expand and move on and um, the other impetus is uh, coming also from the edf uh, european defense fund uh, where they you know uh, make these calls for the research and development projects uh, we are quite successful in, in that having uh, four projects now ongoing and uh, on one of them we also met with the uh, with the Austrian MOD, they are also very supportive and uh, we are also working with them together. Again, so this is the start and then we move uh, also to, 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 other, um, to other MODs. Um, otherwise, uh, it's very interesting that you also um, start these ideas and solidify them in the, in the patents and patent applications. And then out of this, uh, we grow the product, you know, and put it on the market. 
of course, uh, you put it on the market with the one of the or the other uh, MOD, and, and then you see how it goes. Are there any development you already have in mind relying on virtual reality? So we are always talking about the simulation within the virtual world in synthetic environment, if you like. However, our domain is always uh, train as you fight. So the, the motto uh, behind uh, our developments, uh, and obviously you don't see any soldiers uh, yet, at least, you know, running around on the battlefield with the VR goggles. That's why we are not using VR goggles in our indoor uh, training simulators. Part of the uh, part of the reason, so so the reason is you know train as you fight. Uh, the other reason is also let's see if you are using the anti tank weapon, which is a shoulder launch tube. You know, it's quite difficult. You know, with uh, VR goggles, you know, pu putting them on and, and doing all, all the stuff. If you want to have a very realistic uh, replica, also for handling. Uh, so uh, our motto is always, you know, uh, following having the realistic replicas and then having the uh, presentation or projection of the simulated scenery where you do the, the training in front of the trainees. Okay, on the lead wall, let's say. So th this is the, the last one that we have. All right. We have achieved a comprehensive presentation of your system. For me, it, it's perfect. Is there anything you would like to add, sir? So uh, regarding this uh, lead wall that, that we um, that we uh, presented in Orlando in uh, ITEC, uh, I would like to emphasize really the modularity uh, approach coupled with mobility. So this is very important. So today somehow we have seen, especially in Europe, so the need. Okay, you have. Uh, some very static large training centers where you put, you know, uh, 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 static training uh, solutions there, but then they want to move around uh, either uh, on the fields with some smaller, smaller barracks or something uh, similar, and they want to carry uh, with them also the training solution, simulation training solution. That's why that is how we came up with this. Uh, uh, some it's called, but, but lead wall uh, based solution. So everything is packed. Uh, and then when you come to the to the uh, location, you can have it uh, up and running within two hours. So achieving very high efficiency of the training, you know, within the uh, within the limited uh, time, you can set, set up it uh, and run very efficiently. So, so this was basically the idea. You take the training with you, okay? Thank <music> you.